Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Um, today's topic is cohomology. So not homology, but cohomology. Or as a lot of people would like to call it, including myself, so I call it reversing errors. So the co is usually referring to reversing some errors. And the main idea here is as follows. So um, let's just think about the linear algebra part. So homology over a field is basically a construction linear algebra. You have kernels and uh, images, you have matrices, and vector spaces, and so on. And in the vector space, recall, there is a nice way, or there are two nice ways to write down vectors, either as columns, so standing, or as rows, laying, laying down. And there's a good, really good reason to prefer columns over rows. And of course, there's a duality connecting them, vector space duality. So maybe there's something similar for homology. And yeah, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Yes, there is. And it's called cohomology. So let's have a look. So uh, I stole the idea for this whole presentation from a very nice site linked in the description, including this picture, which I also stole, of course. So the idea is, well, homology that's downstairs. So homology, uh, the H n, H down n, and cohomology will be the H upper n. So homology kind of starts with something high dimensional and looks at boundaries and boundaries and boundaries and boundaries. So it would start with something like a tetrahedron and look at uh, the triangle boundaries of a tetrahedron. And then it would look at the line boundaries of the triangles and then it would look at the point boundaries of the, of the lines. Um, yeah, so you're going from high dimensions to low dimensions. Is there any good reason to prefer this direction? Uh, no, there isn't, of course, it's, it's, it's the same uh, like preferring column vectors over row vectors, there's no good reason for it. And yeah, homology kind of turns everything around. So arrows, dimensions, etc. So it starts with points. So would, they would be here, associates to them the co-boundaries, so makes this more precise in a second, associates to them the co uh, the lines, the co-boundaries, which are lines, associates to them the co-boundaries, which are triangles, associates to them the co-boundaries, which are tetrahedrons, and so on. And this is the idea. You kind of turn the whole process around. So let's uh, recall actually how homology works or how a version of homology works, whatever you want to call it. So the main idea of homology is you start with a tetrahedron and you kind of want to throw tetrahedrons in your space in a very controlled way. And you want to connect the various dimensions in your tetrahedron via boundary maps by looking at the boundary. So in my notation here, I have well, three, four vertices labeled 0, 1, 2, 3. And I would label whatever the edge between 0 and 2. I would call it 0, 2. And I would label uh, faces by whatever the face 0, 2, 3, for example, would be the face that is facing here to the right. And the tetrahedron itself would just contain all points. So it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So that's kind of the standard labeling here of those tetrahedron triangle line and vertice like setup. And what homology then does in one way or the other is it throws those things into your space and it looks at the corresponding boundary maps. So it kind of wants to associate to a tetrahedron a sum of triangles. For example, my tetrahedron, at, uh, which is the only tetrahedron in my example here, is sent to the sum of its um, four faces so the corresponding triangles 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 3, 2, uh, well, 0, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Right? So you associate the tetrahedron to its boundary. Uh, so it goes from 2, from dimension 3 to dimension 2. Similarly, I associate triangles to their boundary. So I go from dimension 2 to dimension 1. So here's an example. And I would associate um, lines to the sum of their points. So here would be an example. So always going in one direction, always going lower, you go to the boundary of something. Um, okay, slight catch here, be careful. So I don't want to, in, in this video, I don't want to worry about orientation. So I just take the more two coefficients if you want. Anyway, so in general, there will be some orientation and some sign involved, not over z more two, luckily z more two rocks. Um, so I don't need to care, care about sign. What is important in this video is the message, like you go from a three-dimensional thing to a two-dimensional thing by taking boundaries. You go from a two-dimensional thing to a one-dimensional thing by taking boundaries and so on. And again, there is no reason to prefer a column over a row. So there should be a way of reversing everything. 
kind of same picture, but slightly different setup. So in cohomology, I would like to turn everything on its heads. So I would like to go from two to three. I would like to go from one to two, and I would like to go from uh, zero to one. Again, the zero two coefficients. But anyway, so I would like to associate a triangle to a tetrahedron. I would like to associate a line to triangles, and I would li like to associate a point to lines, and so on. So a tetrahedron to uh, a four-dimensional version of a tetrahedron, whatever that is. Um, Sure, it's just a force in black. Anyway, so here's an example. So let's take a line. So the line zero one. It's the line to uh, to the left here. And what do you associate to it? Well, in homology, we would associate to it its boundary points. In cohomology, I would like to associate to it its co-boundary. And the co-boundary in in this case is just are uh, just the two triangles which have this one as as in in, in it. So it's just a Two triangles where it appears. So in this case, it would be the triangle 0, 1, 2 and the triangle 0, 1, 3. So 0, 1, 2 is the one in the front and 0, 1, 3 is the one in the back. This is These are the two triangles where my line appears. And this defines me a co-map, right, from uh, or co-boundary map, whatever you call it. So from lines to triangles. Similarly, you can associate um, faces or so triangles to the tetrahedron. In this case, there's only one tetrahedron, so all would map to the same tetrahedron. And you can associate a point to all the lines where it lives in. So here's an example. The point zero lives in uh, three lines, the line zero one, uh, the line zero two, and the line zero three. And you can call that a co-boundary map. It turns out that it's, it's this is basically what you would like to do, but there's a better formulation. And that's the one I would like to present next. And that's the one that appears in most textbooks. So the better formulation of what I just said is the following. So I would like to think of row vector, column vectors and row vectors in the following way. So a column vector is a vector in a vector space. And a row vector is also a vector in a vector space, of course. But it's kind of smarter to, or slightly better to think of it as a linear form. So a, a column vector takes a row vector and gives a number. So that's a home from the corresponding vector space to my ground field. And let us do the same. I take this dual vector space approach. So I define um, my code chain complexes or code chain groups as um, the singular co-simplices, which by definition are just the homes from uh, the simplices to whatever my ground field is. In this case, I actually don't work over a field, I work over Z. So I send it, send it to Z. So the homes from uh, the uh, chains to Z. And then you get kind of everything for free. So uh, the boundary map is now the dual map. Uh, instead of having the explicit description from before, you just define it as a dual of homology. So this, of course, already assumes that we know homology, but that's totally fine. There will be some upshot from this construction in the end, because um, as soon as you have linear forms, you can think of pairings and so on. So it, it's, it's kind of a good formulation. Also, you need to know what homology is in order to do this. OK, slight catch. Anyway, um, and since all arrows turn around, this is always very confusing. Uh, you still take the same kernel and image construction, but now the arrows have turned around. So instead of, instead of taking kernel of the boundary map, uh, the co-boundary map, map modulo image of the co-boundary map plus one, you take the minus one because all arrows have to do this. Anyway, um, this would be the definition that you usually find for cohomology, really using this idea that a column vector and a row vector are related by a vector form, vector form. I will make it more precise in a second by drawing a picture. Uh, but anyway, so this would be the definition of singular cohomology. And there's also singular uh, simplicial cohomology, and there's also cellular cohomology. And as before, uh, they agree for any reasonable space. So you just pick your favorite one. Um, as, as soon as your space is reasonable, just pick your favorite one, compute it, and all the others will be the same anyway. OK, so let me uh, go to the, my last slide. So I really want to sell this idea here that cohomology should be thought of as, uh, certainly, by the way, certainly this is not my idea. This is very classical, of course. But anyway, I would like to sell it anyway. So that um, cohomology um, to homology is like linear forms to vectors. So a, a vector, in at one point, someone has decided that columns are vectors and uh, rows are linear forms. They're really kind of the duals in those pictures. And the linear form, so a 
eats a vector by the usual vector, multi uh, vector multiplication, matrix multiplication, and spits out a number, whatever, five. Um, and that's a form. In other formulation, you would just write down its home form somewhere to your ground truth. And that's exactly what how cohomology would be defined in a more modern framework, instead of what I did before, like um, going to the co-boundaries by, by looking at where it lies in the simplicial complex space. So the modern formulation would be more like a dual vector space. It's home from um, the chains to whatever my ground field is or my ground ring is, Z in this case. It's really this idea of transposing vectors. And now they're not just transposed vectors. They have an extra kind of an extra structure on it. They are a form, um, so a map from vectors to, uh, to the ground ring, to the ground field, whatever. Again, slight catch at this approach kind of prefers homology over cohomology because I kind of assume that you already know what homology is before you can compute cohomology. But there's a big upshot, as I said, and we now have forms instead of just vectors. And as soon as you have forms, you can think of pairings and you will get, basically you have just discovered form duality, which is not the topic of uh, this, this lecture anyway. Anyway, I'm starting raffling, so let me wrap up. So cohomology is, is this idea of why is homology preferring one direction? There's no good reason for that. So let's have a look at what happens if you go in the other direction. And the abstract kind of a good formulation of it is using dual vector spaces or dual groups, whatever you want to call them. And you have to just have to be careful that everything just turns around. And now instead of going um, from high dimensions to low dimensions via boundaries, you go from low dimensions to high dimensions via co-boundaries. But that's about it. Um, and right now it's not quite clear why one of them should be preferable over the other. There are some good reasons to prefer cohomology over homology in some sense, like their cohomology rings. I admit there are homology core rings, but anyway, this is not the top of, topic of the video, but in some sense, uh, nature prefers rings over core rings. Whatever, I, I'm really raffling now. Anyway, so cohomology, reversing arrows, and the reversing arrow operation here uh, was the natural one that we have learned in linear algebra is taking the dual vector space just in this appropriate setup, just taking the dual chain groups. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.